Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out an Ableton Live 10 video. We'll be looking at the new audio effect. It's called Drum Bus. So I wanted to do this video because this uh, this plugin, this effect, isn't included in the cheaper versions of Live, and you might be grappling with should I update? So we're gonna look at it on a few different types of drums. We're gonna look at like a pop moon baton example and even some acoustic style drums to see what it's fully capable of. And we're also gonna talk about the controls. So this isn't a full fledged tutorial. It's more of kind of like a first look, a little bit of a review. So let's dive right in. So I have the drum bus pulled up on a group of drums. Let's listen real quick. All right, so let's talk about some of the controls. And as we do this, I have soloed the drum. So this first row over here gives you three different distortion modules, a compression toggle, and your trim slider. Now these, these are actually really important to the drum bus. So going top bottom here, soft, medium, hard represent different types of distortion. Soft is a wave shaping distortion. Medium is a, uh, a limiting distortion. And then the hard is a clipping distortion. So let's just audition these real quick on the drums. So hard will basically turn everything into hard style kicks um, as you boost it to about 90 to 100%. But you get the idea. There's just different flavors of distortion. I really like soft and medium as I've used the drum bus over the past few weeks. Now trim is a really important control. I have it set to almost negative 12 dB. I think it was set at negative 12 dB when I played the demo the, the, with the whole track. But it's at negative 11.9 right now. Now this trim control allows you to reduce the amount of input coming into the drum bus before you apply any processing. Now the compressor adds a good amount of gain. So if I turn off the compressor, got a lot quieter and then a lot louder. So that's why I took the trim down. Now it also allows me to add more distortion to color the sound, to shape the sound. Now that's why you probably, first thing you want to do when you open up the, uh, the drum bus is turn down the trim. So then you can start tweaking with things because you won't get uneven results. You'll actually be able to hear what's doing to the sound, how it's you know shaping it, how it's adding color or vibe without it completely destroying the balance of your mix. All right, so over to the right of that, we have our mid-frequency controls, our mid-frequency shaping. And you have crunch, damp, and transients. Now, I actually turned the transients down for this because it just fit the vibe of this, like, moon baton pop. And it helped, it kind of killed the decay of the snare a little bit, which is fit. And as I was playing around with that, I thought it'd be really interesting to mess around with this idea where, because I've never really used transient shaping on an entire group of drums Usually I use it on individual groups, um, like groups within groups, essentially, where I'll be like, okay, the snare is too much decay. Let's use a transient shaper to, to kill some of the decay. Or the kick's not cutting through. Let's add some, you know, some transient to it. To, this will pop the, the, the tick or the click just to make it shine out over the top of the mix a little bit more. But what I thought would be kind of cool to do would, if you have a track that has like a similar drum groove from maybe your, your build or your pre-chorus, to your course or your drop, it might be really interesting to mess around with automating the transients, because check this out. Right, it sounds smaller. And then you can have the exact same groove and then open up into your you know bigger section of the song track and let more of the decay through. I thought that might be an interesting, uh, interesting idea, but I digress. So the transient knob in the drum bus is going to emphasize or de-emphasize, depending on which way we turn it, and we're de-emphasizing right now in this example, uh, the transients of frequencies above 100 hertz. So it doesn't touch things in the kick range. By kick range, I mean more the sub range, the really low meaty part of your kick, which is actually beneficial. So the damp control, you see here that's labeled in uh, Hertz, is a filter. So it's a low pass filter. And the reason you have that there is when you add distortion, distortion adds harmonics, it can add more high end to the sound. This allows you to dial back the high end. Now you might want more high end. 
It just depends on your genre, your track, and what you're going for sonically. So over to the right, we have our low end, our bass controls. You have boom, frequency, decay, and they also have this bass meter over here, which becomes important. So, so as I crank the boom up, as the name suggests, we get more boom to the low end. Now, this is kind of a two-part tool with these, with these uh, knobs here. You have a resonant filter, and then you have a way to adjust the enhancement of the resonant filter. So this frequency here, you can hear it's really affecting our kick right now. It's almost like a tom right now. And the hertz is at 90. So the boom knob is essentially just accentuating the amount of the low end frequency that is being enhanced by the resonant filter. And you also have this bass meter here in case you can't hear what's happening because I'm, I'm boosting this into extreme ranges so you can hear it. But a more realistic example. You know, it might be something like that. Now, the slider down here, the decay, is going to be how long those low frequencies kind of sustain for. So check this out. I'll turn the boom back up. Which is awesome. Uh, it's kind of like magic voodoo that they got this in there because anytime you have, like I've, I mentioned this before, these one-stop shop drum plugins I've never really liked because they just lack the ability to to dial in what you need. This one gets it right. So I can, you know, I could do these extreme boosts. All right, so another really just well thought out feature is this little section under the decay. We can solo our low end and our boom, but we can also see what frequency corresponds to, you know, how it corresponds to a note value. So that's relevant for our key. So this track is in, I believe it's in F sharp. So let's take this down to F sharp here. So if we bring back in some of the instruments. You can hear that as I crank up the boom, it's actually working with our track, not against it. So nice little feature. We can actually solo it. So let's turn these other instruments off again and we'll solo Right, so you can just hear the low end. Now finally, of course, you have the dry wet. So maybe you could get away with using the hard setting on the distortion in more of like a parallel type of environment. So I turn the dry wet down to 50%, about 50%. So I have 50% dry coming through, 50% wet. And now I can, you know, maybe get away using that more extreme distortion. All right, so the drum bus is even capable of taking Limp noodle drums like this. And turning them into this. <laughs> I mean, that's a huge difference. So um, I mentioned this earlier in the video. I would use, and I will use the hard distortion mode on acoustic oriented drums and this these drums are coming from xln addictive uh, drum so the actual kit itself isn't anything special doesn't really you know fit the needs of really any type of current edm obviously like pop track that's edm influenced but now with the drum bus on this would work with a hip-hop vibe it obviously works with this type of track <laughs> All right, so that sums up our look at the Drum Bus plugin in Live 10. Now, if you guys are on the fence about upgrading to Live, maybe this video will help you make more of an informed decision. I personally really like the Drum Bus. I don't know if it's enough to get me to spend a few hundred extra dollars to update 
Um, but it definitely moves the needle in the right direction. And I'm more of a logic user. I'd probably say I use logic 75% of the time, maybe, maybe 70% now. And, uh, I can see myself jumping into a live session, especially if I'm working with acoustic drums, just to use the drum bus. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you want to stay up to date with all the videos that I'm releasing on this channel, like and subscribe, you know that whole dance. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.